Hi there guys, it's Justin here. In today's video, um, I'm exploring where the uh, having hyper-threading on versus hyper-threading off actually gives you a performance boost in games. So what I did is I benchmarked eight different games, as you can see here. So with hyper-threading off, I benchmarked eight, eight games, and then with hyper-threading on, I benchmarked the same eight games again. What I did then is the average FPS's I added up, got a total amount, and then I divided by eight, because obviously I tested in eight games, and that gave me my average FPS per, or every average FPS per game over eight games. So now with hyper-threading off, um, my total FPS over the eight games was 564.97, and the average FPS was 70.62. And then with hyper threading on, my total FPS over those eight games was 558.5, and then the average FPS per game was 69.81. So what you'll actually notice is with hyper threading off, there is a slightly, slightly little um, performance boost um, in games. However, my data was slightly skewed because as you can see, certain games actually have higher FPS with hyper-threading off and then certain games have high, higher FPS with hyper-threading on. So now, um, something, uh, uh, something to note, a new game that just launched recently, Spider-Man Remastered, the average FPS is 71 with hyper-threading off and then with hyper-threading on, the average FPS is 69. And one thing I did notice is uh, with Spider-Man Remastered, um, not only was the average FPS higher with hyper-threading off, when you go, when you web swinging and you uh, go past like trees or anything that causes your CPU to have to make calculations, um, with hyper-threading off, you actually lost less FPS when you swam past trees, whereas with hyper-threading on, there was a, uh, a more significant loss in FPS uh, when you swing past trees. So um, just to show you, unfortunately it didn't quite work because obviously with hyper-threading on, um, multitasking is, the, uh, the performance is boosted when you're multitasking. So I did a split screen comparison over here. Okay, let me just drop the volume there quickly. So I did a split screen comparison here. And the, the, the benefit of hyper-threading being on is that you can multitask. So unfortunately it's not representative like the FPS here. It's not really representative because obviously I'm multitasking. So with um, hyper-threading off on this side, my multitasking doesn't work. So I'm actually losing FPS here because I've got OBS open. And then with my uh, upper threading on, it looks like I've got have high FPS, but it's actually because I've got OBS on, so multitasking is actually causing my FPS to, to drop a little bit. But the reason I did this comparison, um, or why I wanted to do this comparison in the first place, is just to show you where you will actually see the benefits uh, by switching upper threading off. So now in the city, the, the FPS is very much the same, but then as you get closer to Central Park, where there are a whole bunch of trees, so your CPU has to do a whole bunch of calculations, you actually, uh, the FPS actually drops when you've got hyper-threading on. So we're going to be getting up to it now. So now this section over here, with hyper-threading on, you actually lose performance. With hyper-threading off, uh, you actually lose less FPS. Unfortunately, it's not represented here. This, as mentioned, I'm using OBS, which uses CPU, not GPU. So, um, yeah, it actually looks like I'm losing less FPS, but it's only because I'm using OBS. So, um, the reason I did this testing today is because a viewer actually asked me, uh, look, I've actually read up, or I've seen that many people say that you get a performance boost when you switch hyper-threading off. So I've done this test years back, so I assumed I was right. 
I said, yeah, if you got a quad core, you're going to lose performance. But if you got anything more than six cores, turning up a thing off will actually give you a performance boost. Well, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised because even with, uh, I've got a, a, a 10th generation i5 with four uh, with eight threads, four cores. So I thought I was actually going to lose performance. But surprisingly, you actually gain a little bit of performance by, by even with a quad core, with a modern quad core CPU, you actually gain a little bit of performance. So you learn something new every day. So anyways, guys, if you got a quad core, I'd say anything from uh, eighth generation and newer, and especially if you got a hexa core or octa core processor games, you will get a slight little performance boost if you switch off hyper threading. So how you go about that, obviously it's going to differ from, from uh, laptop to laptop, from, uh, from computer to computer. I've got a Dell, so when I go into my BIOS, you reboot your system, you go into the BIOS, and if you've got a Dell, you look for the performance tab, and then you just scroll down in that performance tab, and then right at the bottom of the options, you'll get Intel hyper-threading, and then you can actually toggle it on or off. And then for other uh, other manufacturers such as Lenovo, such as Asus, MSI, whatever the case may be, maybe the the wording will be slightly different. But the but essentially you should be able to uh, switch it off in the BIOS following the sim a, a similar um, a similar process, which is looking for perform for the performance tab and then just scrolling down until you find Intel hyper threading. But yeah, just to point out one more time, um, my results are slightly skewed here. Certain games actually do prefer when you have hyper threading on, such as AC Odyssey, I've got one extra FPS here. Rise of a Tomb Raider, it's got uh, slightly less than one FPS with hyper threading on higher. Ryzen Zero Dawn, it's got one FPS higher. Um, and in fact, the, the trend continues that way. It's just with Batman Arkham Knights, you'll see with hyper threading on, you're actually getting six average FPS lower than with hyper threading off. And then obviously, as mentioned earlier, Spider-Man Remastered, with hyper threading off, you actually get higher average FPS. And that is due to the fact that when you go past trees or anywhere where the CPU has to make heavy calculations, you're getting less FPS dips. So if you're currently playing Spider-Man Remastered and you've got a quad core or anything higher than a quad core, I highly recommend if you want a more stable gameplay and if you want a better gaming experience for Spider-Man Remastered, go and switch Hyper 3 and off. Anyways guys, that's today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And um, But the most important part is, if you enjoyed this video, go and smash that like button. If you haven't subbed to the channel just yet and you do enjoy this type of content, please go and destroy the subscribe button. And if you got any videos that you want me to do for you, uh, to do any testing, um, any questions that you have, hit me up in the comment section, I'll do it for you. Other than that guys, have a good day. It's people like you that make a difference. Cheers.